64 presents A player toy that video review Sit back and enjoy the show Hey there, welcome to another Lemon 64 Play Guide and Review. In this week's episode, we'll be checking out Sorcerer Attack, developed by James D. Sachs and published by Lotus Soft in 1984. In this game, we must destroy a number of alien sorcerers as they rampage through Washington DC. And as you can see by reading those instructions, if those things have paused on the screen, we'll gain one point for destroying those. And if they are moving targets, we'll gain four points. And if we don't hit anything for three seconds, then those aliens are awarded an extra point anyway. So let's press a key and let's try out this game and let's see how far we can get with it. First of all, we can enter our player's name on the keyboard and we are thrust into daytime in this first person shooter in Washington DC. If the aliens are high on screen, that will give us a higher pitch sound effect and if they are low on the screen that will go lower that is definitely needed for later on when those aliens try to land on the White House lawn and if they do that then it's game over and if the alien sorcerers manage to reach 50 points then it's also game over so in Sorcerer Attack you have to make sure you hit those targets and destroy those at least every so often otherwise those points will be awarded to those aliens at an ever increasing number It's important to remember that those aliens moving from right to left will pause on the screen and that means that we can lock on to those and we can rapidly press the fire button to destroy those once they are in our sights. Unfortunately the collision detection in this game leaves something to be desired and sometimes even if that thing is bang in our sights sometimes it will not get destroyed and sometimes this game plays slightly unfairly in the fact that the aliens are supposed to lose a point every time we score one but I didn't actually notice a great deal of that going on as I played this game don't hit that target then the aliens will be awarded points anyway you can see those things really rack up with every single shot and so I'm not entirely sure how to progress in this game and get the maximum score from it but you can see we are on five points at the moment having blown up five saucers and we still have a long way to go but if we can destroy a moving target that is supposed to be worth four points to us and it will also remove three points from the aliens and that's one way to gain that score and to knock those down a little bit and give us a fighting chance. Sorcerer Attack is played over three stages and when the player hits 50 points then the evening will appear and in the evening you'll get another batch of flying saucers and in the evening they will destroy a part of the city I'm not quite sure but they will definitely destroy either a part of the obelisk you see parked on the front lawn of the White House or they might take a chunk from the dome itself and if you score 100 points then time will advance again and you'll find yourself playing this at night at the end of each game the scores will be handed out and you can press Y to play again or S to play as exactly the same player name so let's press the S key and let's try that again <laughs> The 
him as this entire game is to score 150 points against those aliens and then the mothership will appear which has a shield and also a command module with some tentacles apparently hanging down. The aim is to destroy the shield and destroy that command module and if you've managed to gain 150 points by that time and playing this in the dark then you should expect at that point that the mothership will be even more difficult than these alien drones we're facing at the moment. This game was completely designed, coded and scored by Jim Sachs, otherwise known as James D. Sachs. He originated from California in the San Fernando Valley and he created this game in two months in machine code on the Commodore 64 and he was a self-taught machine code programmer and this was his first effort which was really admirable in 1984 when apart from games like Alice in Video Land we didn't really get too many hand-drawn graphics on our screens but this really was hand-drawn and converted pixel by pixel from paper onto the computer and you can see the flag waves and you also notice that there are shadows on the ground whenever those aliens fly over them but Apart from those touches, there are some nice animated effects, but again, we won't get to see those in this play guide because we won't be getting that far with it. Jim Zax moved on to Defender of the Crown in 1986 for the Commodore 64 and the Amiga. In 1987 he worked on the graphics for Ports of Call for the Amiga, following that up with Centurion Defender of Rome in 1990. He also created the legendary CDTV ROM screen for Commodore, and then he went on to draw extra graphics for Defender of the Crown 2, which appeared in 1993. Saucer Attack was released by mail order, available from the author directly, and he abandoned the Commodore 64 scene once the piracy really got going, and moved on to the Amiga, where apparently the piracy was less of an effect, but as we know, the Amiga had even more piracy than you wouldn't believe. I think this game is a great graphics demo, what was available in 1984, and for its time, this really did wow the public, with its detail, and as a first person shooter, well maybe this was one of the first of its genre, and went on to inspire games, perhaps something like Operation Wolf and Operation Thunderbolt. Although the graphics on offer are amazing, the sound effects can get a bit grating on the nerves after a while. The explosions are okay, but in the playability department, the hit detection bugs are rather annoying, and it's very difficult to get some kind of play together and to get through all these enemies. Certainly, according to the Lemon64 database, every single comment, almost without fail, mentioned the fact that this was style over substance, and the gameplay was virtually non-existent and that means that the scores for this game were rather low. Zap agreed with the general consensus and awarded this game 30% in November 1985, saying the graphics were amazing, but the playability didn't exist. And the current Lemon64 score is 53% for Saucer Attack, which gives this an average score of 4 out of 10. And I think this had potential, this had something going for it, but it's really a glorified graphics demo and for its time it provided great eye candy and probably looked good in a shop window but unfortunately it wasn't an amazing advert for the playability of first person shooters that we enjoy to this day. On the 
1964, I'm still getting my ass kicked by this swarming horde of aliens battering away at Washington, and you can see no amount of firepower aimed in their direction will abate that attack. I think, again, it's a tremendous shadow on the floor, but it's unfortunate that we don't get any great lighting effects as we move through time, but we won't get to see those because we won't be getting 50 points. 31 is my highest, and because this was written in BASIC, you can actually list that out, and it's a great way to explore program code and try to find the hacks to this game and actually hack it so that it's possible to win. And on that note, I will leave you with that, and thanks once again for viewing another 1164 Play Guide and Review. Hope to see you again in another show soon. Thank you.